Hi. In this video demonstration here, we're going to be talking about some differences and similarities between uh, two different shader types. Uh, the one which we've been kind of focused on up until this point, which is our standard shaders, and we've been talking a lot about uh, uh, our different channels uh, and uh, setting types that we've got here in the 3D Studio Max default standard uh, shader materials. Uh, and the other one is, as we get a little bit more into using Mental Ray as our main source of uh, rendering software, uh, Mental Ray comes along with its own uh, sort of standard shader here, uh, which are called the Arc and Design uh, shaders by Mental Ray. Uh, both are shader shells, which we can build the exact same kinds of uh, texture shaders and materials in. Uh, but, you know, some things may have, uh, have changed in uh, how the settings function or even some things such as uh, what they're called or, or names or locations uh, may differ. Uh, if you look here, I've got two different uh, versions of 3D Studio open, two different uh, versions of the software. Uh, and in one side, I've got our standard, which uh, you should be fairly familiar with by now. Uh, here as far as the standard shaders and settings and, and channels are concerned. Uh, and in the other, I have loaded up our Mental Ray Arc and Design texture. And if we kind of go through this, you'll see that the Arc and Design has uh, a, little bit uh, a little bit of uh, more information uh, in it or more places to put information and more settings to change. Uh, but that doesn't mean that they're, they're more useful or less useful as far as the other is concerned. Uh, some, some key differences is the standard shaders are what 3D Studio has been using since uh, the first release of the program. Uh, so it works well with our standard default scanline renderer, uh, which is, you know, honestly, okay, but not that great of a, as far as a renderer is concerned in getting a very realistic uh, animation or uh, three-dimensional artwork in any way. Uh, and then we've got this uh, this new shader set here since uh, Mental Ray was added to the 3D software package, I believe in, in release 6, and we're now up to uh, 14 here. Uh, and, and we've got uh, a lot of the same things that you're going to be noticing in here, right? We've got our diffuse color slot here. We've got a diffuse uh, color slot here. Uh, things like our glossiness remain the same, but other things have changed, like instead of specular, they're using the word reflectivity, uh, stuff along the lines of that. Uh, you'll also find settings for reflection and refraction here in this one, whereas in before you had to uh, assign those settings uh, via the channels uh, here underneath where our maps rollout is. Uh, so, th so some of this stuff is kind of packaged with this shader type here, uh, and some of it uh, isn't, whereas we've got some extra things to, to kind of contend with here, but we can do very similar, if not uh, almost nearly the same thing uh, with either. Now, the standard shaders only work do, or work the standard shaders will work well with both the default scanline renderer assigned and the mental ray renderer assigned however the mental ray arc and design shaders will only work if you have assigned mental ray as your uh, rendering software that you're currently up to using uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to shut down one of these guys now that I've uh, kind of given you a side by side here with it. I'm just going to I'm just going to minimize this one here from the Arc and Design uh, look here. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to kind of uh, reset everything and start from scratch. First off, I'm going to show you how to make sure that you have Mental Ray assigned as your renderer so that we can actually uh, be able to see these things, uh, and we'll get going from there. Uh, now, when you first start up 3D Studio. Uh, you probably have some some defaults, uh, default settings. Uh, now, I myself have changed these defaults uh, to get going. Uh, but when you open things up, it'll look kind of like this. Now, in order to get to your render setup, you've got this little teapot button with the little dialog window in front of it. This is your render setup button. You can also find it in the rendering menu, uh, two down, render setup. You can also hit the hotkey F10 to bring up your render setup. Uh, and this is the place where you're going to find all of your renderer settings, things that you can change, things that you can uh, manipulate to get a better image. Uh, things like advanced lighting uh, techniques and algorithms will be found in here that we'll get on to uh, get to uh, later on in this course. Uh, but it's going to look a lot like this. Uh, you'll have several tabs uh, that will be, the tabs will be different, all of them except for this common one, which will be the same no matter what renderer you're using. 
Uh, your common tab, which uh, I'm sure you've learned by now in, in your previous class uh, or classes, that you've got the controls over our common parameters such as time output, whether you want to render a single frame uh, of an animation or your entire active segment or a range, stuff like that. Uh, your output size, uh, do you want to render something custom uh, or are you rendering for HD film and television at full 1080 or 720 or the like, stuff like that. Uh, I'll most of the time work in HD nowadays just because that's what everyone wants, right? Uh, you've got certain options that uh, are covered by all these uh, different renderers, which we'll probably get to at some point uh, during this course as well. Uh, as well as your render output, uh, what you want to render to, uh, various file types, uh, as well as giving things uh, a name for your final rendered image, or images, as the uh, animation may require. All the way to the bottom of this common tab, however, you've got the Assign Renderer rollout, and it's this guy right here, down here at the bottom. Uh, if we hit that plus sign there to open it up, it shows you your de three default uh, assigned renderers here. Uh, and when you first start 3D Studio up, you'll probably see default scanline renderer in all of these guys. Uh, the one we're concerned with is our production renderer, what our final uh, outcome will be here. Uh, so we've got our production renderer, which is going to be our, our default scanline renderer by base. Now, when I go ahead and hit a render button, right now I've got nothing on my, on my uh, screen. Uh, let me actually put something on my screen so it'll slow things down a little bit here. Uh, turn on my save frames there. Uh, when you hit the render button, you'll see it gets its name from this one line that scans down the page and gives you a finalized image, right? Uh, so, getting the name Default Scanline Renderer. First hint that you are not using the Mental Ray Renderer. Uh, go ahead and hit that again, and you know, we see that uh, scan down there. Uh, so, we're, we're going to want to change this to our Mental Ray Renderer. It's what we're going to be working with uh, for this entire course, probably from here on out. Uh, and we're going to do that by hitting the Browse button, which is this three ellipses little channel button uh, thing here, which will give you the rollover of Choose Renderer. Uh, and from a list, uh, mine may have some extras that you guys won't see on yours because I use a couple of different rendering softwares uh, day to day. Uh, but you will find NVIDIA Mental Ray now in the list. And we're going to go ahead and select that with the list highlighted blue and hit OK to assign Mental Ray as your renderer. Uh, you may notice the tabs at the top here, all but the common tab, uh, have changed or been uh, reorganized, right? Uh, real quick, let me put this back just to show you, as far as our materials are concerned, uh, that if you do have default scanline renderer in here, and we go ahead over here into our material editor here, uh, if you need a, a reminder on how to get into your material editor, again, it's this uh, button up here on your main toolbar, uh, M on your keyboard, M for materials, will also open that up. And we've got our nice large standard button here. I call it the standard button because that's what it defaults us with, is a standard shader in here. But you can click on this to open up our material browser here uh, and open up the materials rollout to change or modify or, you know, add in the various different beginning shaders that we have to work with. Uh, and there are several of them that uh, that we may or may not get to quite yet, but you'll you'll pick up as you go through other modeling classes and texturing courses along the way. Uh, the standard menu, the standard rollout here, is available always, no matter what renderer you have currently installed. Uh, you may see some other ones like you will not see this V-Ray down here because I have a, a renderer installed that I, I you guys probably do not have uh, other software that you can buy as far as plugins are concerned, etc. But without Mental Ray installed, you will not be able to find any of that Arc and Design uh, shaders in this list whatsoever. If, on the other hand, I go ahead and, again, all the way down here on the bottom of our Common tab in our Render Setup, Assign Renderer, go ahead and click that Ellipses button and choose NVIDIA Mental Ray as our default renderer or our assigned renderer in the production slot. Uh, when I hit this standard button to change over to our other shaders, uh, rather than just uh, this nice list of standard shaders, I'll also have a mental ray list of shaders, which kind of opens up a whole awful lot uh, of brand new things that we can work with, from car paint shaders to uh, Autodesk architectural shaders, uh, all the way down to some very fancy effects stuff that we might get into later on. At the very, very top of this list will be your arc and design material shaders. 
uh, you can go ahead and mark this one by selecting it in the list and saying OK. And it will change our default shader settings to this new format of Arc and Design by Mental Ray. Uh, the one thing you'll notice in our just our, our material sub uh, selection slots here is that it begins you with something that's a little bit shinier uh, rather than matte. So at least you'll have a, a visual cue that you're, you're using a standard shader over an Arc and Design or vice versa. Now, one of the first things that you'll notice that is different about these shaders uh, to our standard ones is this nice big bright little red lo logo, of course, here. But you've also got a templates rollout up here, where if we open up this little drop-down menu here, we've got quite a bit of selection to get you started, uh, which our standard shaders does not have. Uh, if you know that the material you want to make is glass, uh, at its core, you can always select one of these uh, several that we have down in here under transparent materials in this template menu uh, for glass, whether it's uh, physically solid or thin glass geometry, which simply changes how powerful the refraction or the reflections will be. Uh, things like frosted glass, translucent plastics, water, uh, opaque reflective surfaces, things like metals as far as chrome, copper, uh, or brushed metals are concerned, uh, concrete, ceramic, uh, tiles, plastic, varnished wood, or your good old-fashioned matte finish, pearl finish, or glossy finished uh, standard textures. Selecting one of these will kind of put some default settings in here uh, along the way as far as uh, everything is concerned, right? If I select, let's say, the one for satin varnished wood, it's going to put a kind of a standardly packaged uh, wood texture in our diffuse color slot, uh, as well as change some some settings here that uh, that will make a little bit of a difference. Uh, so, you know, just go back up to our uh, our finishes, stuff like that. We can always change uh, some of this stuff based on a place to start, right? If I want to start with matte plastic and then further refine it uh, from these templates, that's, that's a good way to get going uh, as you first start designing your own procedural textures in here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click and reassign our Arc and Design texture brand new here so that we can kind of talk about what these things do for us. Uh, and one thing that you are going to uh, notice here, and let me bring back up our other one here as we go through this stuff, so we can kind of compare and contrast as we do this, uh, is that if we have a standard selection, some of these names are going to be familiar to you, some of these names are going to be a little different. If you think back to the shaders breakdown, which we gave you during module one, uh, you will notice that in that uh, written lecture there, I gave you several different names of the same thing, synonyms of words that we use throughout the industry. Uh, diffuse, also known as color, right? So we're kind of seeing both in this menu, but this is our diffuse uh, level uh, as well as our diffuse color slot in this nice little uh, now housed uh, selection here. We've got this little box around that's just for the diffuse channels. Only the Mental Ray Arc and Design Texture shaders actually give you a few more options than just Diffuse, uh, Channel Button, and Color. Uh, we still have our Color Swatch, which we can change to any color of the rainbow as we see fit, which will change our overall color of the thing. We still have that Channel Button in here, which we can add things like uh, procedural maps such as noise, uh, dent, fall off, checkerboards, gradients, etc. in here, as well as our standard bitmaps, uh, textures that we may have created in a program outside 3D Studio like Photoshop. Uh, you've also got a diffuse level and a roughness value here. In other words, if you want to use uh, a color or an image in this channel button, but you only want to use it at about 50% strength, we can reduce our diffuse levels and kind of get uh, a little bit extra amount of things to tweak in here. Uh, underneath, rather than underneath, you'll see this specular, uh, specular level and specular uh, color, we've got reflection instead, right? So instead of specular, we're using the word reflection in our mental ray arc and design materials. Uh, but a lot of this stuff functions along the same lines, or at least close to uh, the similar things. In fact, some of this is, is a little bit more simplified, if you ask me. Uh, certain things we've got that are new here will be some check boxes, like uh, if it's a metallic or a metal material, you can put a check mark in this box to get uh, kind of an overall better feel uh, out of this. Now it looks like we've got painted metal rather than painted, let's say, reflective uh, glass or plastic. 
You've still got your reflective color. Uh, in other words, if I kind of change this color to bright yellow, our specular highlight uh, will show up as bright yellow, right? Uh, likewise, let me kind of right click, copy our diffuse color in here so that we can kind of go back and forth uh, to and from this. Uh, but let's see, it doesn't want, doesn't want to do that for me. So we're just going to kind of, you know, make our, uh, our uh, green texture here similarly. Uh, I can always use my, my color picker there, right, and get that same color uh, along those both lines. Uh, and, you know, changing this uh, specular color swatch here to about the same brightness of yellow, uh, and then raising this up is going to give me that similar uh, look to this thing. Let me kind of put that back to yellow there since I messed it up. All right. Uh, and you can start to see that we're getting, you know, a yellow glossy highlight. Uh, similarly to uh, what we have over here in our arc and design textures. Uh, I have to manipulate a little bit more here over here on this side uh, to get it to, to, to resemble these different uh, looks here. But instead of specular level, we have reflectivity and a glossiness number. Instead of our glossiness values being very, very high over here in our standard textures, we have 0 to 1 uh, on our glossiness meter over here in our arc and design textures. Uh, if I want to have a something a little bit more spread out as far as the specular highlight is concerned, I'll reduce to 0.34. Over here, if I want to match the same thing, I might re just reduce it to around 34. Uh, a little bit different, but pretty close to the same thing, right? Here we're working in percentages from 0 to 1.0 value, and here we're working with uh, all the way to 100%. Uh, but likewise, if I kind of move both of these up to those levels, uh, we get something similar. A reflectivity value uh, replaces our specular value here. Whereas from a scale on 0 to 1, 0 being not reflective at all, and 1 being mirror shine to it, uh, if I put a 1 in our reflectivity number and turn on our checkerboard background, uh, we get reflectivity uh, added in to our arc and design shaders rather than having to assign something that will reflect real world uh, or, or virtual world around in it to the reflection channel. It just exists here uh, and all we have to do is adjust a setting. Uh, a little bit of both worlds and we can get our settings to behave the way that we want them to behave, right? If I blow this up you'll notice that if the reflectivity is turned all the way up to one it's got almost a mirror reflection uh, and if I leave my glossiness up to number one We've got a very hard-edged mirror shine to it and reflection, whereas if I reduce my glossiness, that reflection tends to get a little bit more blurry, uh, and things start looking a little bit more metallic reflection rather than mirror reflection, stuff like that. Uh, we've also got a method in our arc and design shaders now to adjust the quality of the reflection. The higher our samples go, the cleaner or less speckled our textures as far as reflections uh, will go. This, of course, will also increase your render times as greatly as you put into it. Uh, defaulted at 8 here, right, we see a lot more specul speckles in our reflective surface here. Uh, but for the most part, you know, uh, you'll make a, a decision as to whether or not to raise that or reduce it depending on render times as well as quality that you need. Likewise, something that we didn't see just in our basic parameters on the standard shader, we've got now as reflection or refraction. Uh, refraction here, again, we used to have to put in a special map, our ray trace map in here in order to get uh, true refraction. Uh, here we have the settings uh, already turned on right in here, right? Uh, and we do that by, you know, uh, changing the color of the refractions, uh, you know, water, you know, if we wanted to, to fool around with some of these things, as well as we have this IOR number, which stands for index of refraction. Uh, the same thing kind of appears in our extended parameters uh, under our standard textures. You'll find your index of refraction there as well uh, for really kind of defining whether or not something is as refractive as the surface of water or something as highly refractive as diamonds or crystals. Uh, and each one of these has a scientific number assigned to it as an index of refraction that uh, you can do a Google search and find all over the place, right? Uh, I happen to know that diamond is 2.42 for the index of refraction, whereas water is 1.33 and glass is 1.5. Just things that you pick up as you do uh, work with this a little bit. We've also got something like a transparency number 
Uh, 1.0 will mean full-on transparency, uh, whereas 0 means non-transparent at all, rather than opacity over here in our standard shaders. 100% uh, opaque means that it's not see-through, and 0% opaque means that it is, right? And if I change my template design to, let's say, thin geometry, uh, we can really start to get a better feel for, uh, you know, what things uh, do for us and what things change. Uh, whereas we can make it 0% transparency and suddenly our glass is completely opaque and very, very unsee-through. Or if we raise it. So it kind of works exactly the opposite. But the idea, the underlying theme of the thing is all still right there. You can change or add a refractive tint to light and objects that are that are that are being bent through here, uh, which can give you some some different effects uh, that we'll get into further on in this course. Uh, you've also got a glossiness number as to how glossy the refractions are, uh, so you can get things that are very 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 shiny, such as uh, a diamond or a crystal type behavior out of this stuff. Uh, you've got a translucency. Uh, indicator here, which we won't go too much into today, but know that we'll probably be touching on it uh, here in the future, uh, which, you know, you can adjust some of these standard settings to get as well, but it's nice having this stuff built in and simplified a little bit on occasion. Uh, anastropy, which you used to have to be able to change from a blend shader over to an anastropic shader. Uh, in here, we've just got some settings that we can change uh, to get that kind of a stretched out version of the same old uh, specular highlights and stuff like that. We'll talk about that more uh, as everything gets uh, going here as well, as well as a rotation, etc., stuff like that. Uh, here over here in our standard shaders, if I turn that up, you can see that, that elongated uh, specular highlight that we can both increase anastropy as well as orientation to kind of wrap around uh, and give you things such as, you know, kind of halos that may look good on a character's uh, hair. Uh, head of hair, stuff like that. Uh, and then, you know, along the same lines uh, over here uh, where we can uh, seriously increase the value in our anastropy to along the same thing. If I up it to 90, we get that stretched or squashed uh, really look to it. Uh, uh, the higher I go, the, the more stretched or squashed that that will uh, get, as well as, you know, changing the orientation of that uh, reflection as well. Uh, in combination with how glossy uh, this stuff really is in the first place. And now you're seeing some of that same uh, anastropy that we're getting before. Uh, if I change that to our full-on rotation, now it's going halo sidewise just like it is there. Further underneath here, uh, we've got more custom uh, reflection and refraction tools, which we won't get into right away because this is kind of our introduction. Uh, we've got our self-illumination. Uh, Mental Ray likes to call this glow, uh, but they've even you know been kind enough to, to put self-illumination because that's what we've gotten used to in our standard over here. Uh, whereas you've got not just a color or a 0 to 100, but now we've got uh, the ability to turn on self-illumination here, uh, tell it what color we want it to glow, uh, as far as, you know, any color of the rainbow. And then we've also got the ability to change it based on things like the Kelvin scale, uh, whereas closer to zero gets you a reddish hue and higher higher numbers up uh, get you something in the blues. Uh, we've also got a higher, uh, rather than just this zero to 100 number here, we've got the ability to uh, use physical units, whereas we can go up into the 46,000s and get something very bright for a light source using our arc and design materials that we just don't have the ability for using just standard materials. 1500 is kind of your average, uh, just like it might have been 100 for this one. And you'll get used to using this stuff as well. Uh, you've also got the ability to, rather than use the Kelvin scale here, to change over to some defaults as far as uh, types of man-made light, uh, incandescent, halogen, fluorescence, etc., just daytime lighting. Uh, that you can start with a template of uh, kind of just like our uh, photometric lights, which we'll get into in the future here as well. One thing that's really nice with our arc and design is that you've also got the ability to turn on or off whether or not this texture illuminates a scene using our final gather 
uh, options, which is how light bounces around in the real world, uh, and using final gathers, how we simulate that here in our virtual world, which we haven't talked about, but we will, so you'll know what that is uh, in the future there. Uh, other things may include our special effects, where we've got some built-in uh, special effects for things like rounded out corners or using uh, ambient occlusion, which is our shadows that uh, in places where light just cannot reach, you know, behind your couch, stuff like that, where it doesn't cast a direct shadow, but where there is going to be shadow just because light doesn't, isn't able to get into those nooks and crannies and cracks and crevices. Uh, other things as far as advanced rendering options, we'll get into a lot of this stuff in the future here. But you can just open up these rendering uh, or these rollouts here and really kind of take a look uh, at what we have to work with here. Uh, I need to go in and I'm going to turn this self-illumination off here. Uh, but we've got the, the ability to, let's say, uh, turn on refraction and give it a color. Uh, let's say kind of a nice bright uh, red here and say that at max distance I want it to refract all red which means we can change things uh, like colored glasses uh, a little bit more accurately uh, and stuff like that. We'll get into those in the future here. We're not ready for all this advanced stuff quite yet. Uh, we've got some interpolation as in how uh, hard it has to work or, or what kind of uh, resolution we'd like our reflections and refractions and our glossiness to be. Uh, other things you'll find under special purpose maps are very familiar, like uh, bump maps, displacements, uh, cutouts, which we would use as, as kind of masks like we did in our opacity channel uh, here. We've also got some new things like environment colors uh, and things like that, where you can put a, an image in here so that your uh, objects are appearing to reflect uh, some serious environmental uh, reflections uh, of the world around them that may not exist in your virtual world. So we can get some very realistic uh, ideas out of these uh, special purpose maps in here. They're just not all found in one little handy dandy maps screen anymore. We've got to kind of find them in their uh, designated areas. Other things like general maps uh, will give you a similar rollout to our good old standard maps rollout here. Uh, your diffuse color is there, your reflection color, which is the, similar to your specular color, if not exactly. Uh, refraction color, which is something that is, you know, not found in here, but if we had added a particular map to our standard refraction channel in here, uh, very similar, very, very close to the same thing, ideas in here. Uh, as well as some new ones like Final Gather, a, uh, Ambient Occlusion, which is our AO stands for, uh, etc. Uh, and then that's that's kind of the the overall idea here be, between uh, these two. Uh, now let's go ahead and let's take a, an idea here. Let's go with some solid geometry, which gives us a a nice default glass here in our mental ray. And then let's take a standard shader here and kind of try and build to similarly uh, get the same idea of building glass in our standard shaders and building something similar in arc and design. Uh, we'll take this nice template uh, of solid geometry glass here to get ourselves started. Uh, and uh, what we want to do is kind of look back and forth to some of the differences that we can uh, expect to encounter, uh, as well as some of the similarities. First things first, right off the bat, right? Uh, we'll notice that they've already changed our diffuse color with this template in our arc and design to black, just like we did in the other video uh, where we made our own glass uh, texture as we were comparing the slate material editor and the compact material editor. So I'll do the same thing. I'll change our diffuse here uh, to black as well. Glass is quite shiny, so it's got the reflectivity and the glossiness number here up at one. I'm going to get something similar over here as well. Uh, let's say I go with a specular level of 120 and then try to get close to the same number. Uh, maybe not entirely the same here, uh, but the closer these two numbers get to each other, the more of the similar effect we're going to have, the closer these two numbers get, right? If I reduce that glossiness number here and here, I get a fuzzier and wider specular hotspot as things go out uh, entirely or not quite. Let's say 0.5 here, we get something close to about the same amount of uh, sheen or shine as we do over here. So if I put this back up to 1 and I put this up to 120, you'll see that we've got a very small, uh, shiny 
specular highlight hotspot. This one's a little smaller than this one, so we compensate uh, by, let's say, dropping it maybe down to 90 or 80, uh, just to kind of try and get very similar effects in here. You see how those kind of work and talk to each other uh, very similarly. Uh, likewise, our transparency number over here on our template in the Arc and Design material is set to 1. So opposite in our standard textures. I've got to reduce our opacity over here to zero. Uh, opaque is completely not see-through, transparent is completely see-through. So they're just using the same idea only on opposite spectrums. We want 100% transparency to see see-through and we want you know zero percent opacity to see, be see-through. Uh, we can again adjust a little bit uh, depending on how we really want our glass to look uh, maybe a 0% opacity over here in our standard textures uh, will get us a little bit better quality uh, as far as refractions and reflections and thickness as things can go. Uh, but you can adjust to try and make the same to similar ideas over here. Now that we're kind of uh, through our basic parameters here, let's open up our maps rollout over here on the standard. Uh, whereas in our reflection and or in our arc and design materials over here, we've got reflection and refraction settings where all we have to do is, is turn them up or turn them down. In our standard materials, we have to add maps to our channels. Uh, for reflection and refraction, the one we would want to add would be our ray trace, right? So in reflection map channel here, I'm going to go ahead and click on it. My material map browser here is going to load up, and I'm going to get the ray trace from the standard list of maps and add that in there. Uh, I don't have to make uh, many changes here. I can go ahead and hit the go to parent button because this one's got a nice auto detect feature on it uh, and just back out of it. And then I can immediately kind of copy this down uh, to the refraction slot. And we're starting to get a little bit more similar, albeit not perfect, right? They're never going to match up exactly. But two different kinds of glass uh, in two different shaders that work just a little bit differently, but a lot more uh, similarly. If we look at our ref refraction here, we've got a color. Uh, if, I, if I change this, let's say this color swatch all the way to black, uh, you'll notice that the refractive color of this uh, fills in. Uh, it's refracting uh, all of this, this black rather than anything else. White to black work differently here. If I leave it closer to white, we get a little bit of this blue tint that they've defaulted us with. Uh, same here. If I want a little bit of that blue tint, uh, I have to do a little bit differently. Uh, same idea, a little bit differently how we work with it. Uh, what I'm going to do is, is reduce our refraction probably down to uh, zero here as far as the amount is concerned and let the ray trace uh, parameters do their thing. I may go ahead and say instead of black here, uh, maybe I'll give ourselves kind of that light blue tinge in our diffuse color slot since we're using uh, almost no opacity whatsoever in here to get something along the same lines as this kind of a blue tint over here in our arc and design. Again, a little bit different, but fairly close here. Uh, you can also see that the reflections here uh, are not quite as heavy uh, on this side because of this index of refraction number and how this shader works a little bit differently than our standard shader. So, in order to compensate, I just cancel that, we'll get that back to black, I can reduce the, refract the reflection number here until, you know, look back and forth to say, okay, those are kind of fairly dim. So if I reduce these numbers over here in our standard shaders to about the same amount of dimness, I start to get something a little bit more along the lines that may be similar to these things. Because Mental Ray has kind of simplified some of this stuff in our reflection and refraction settings, and we just go from zero to one uh, as far as transparency and glossiness and things like that, uh, we've got a little bit of work. We have to dip into our extended parameters over here, maybe. Uh, and our index of refraction shows up. This one meant to work a little bit more using uh, photorealistic and architectural means. Uh, we, can, we can increase or decrease or reduce how that light starts to bend uh, as far as refraction goes. Uh, 1.5, uh, while we don't have kind of a two-sided solid geometry between here, uh, tends to bend uh, the color check mark, uh, color checkerboard behind here in similar fashion gets a little stretched out towards the end, etc. Uh, increasing or decreasing these numbers is going to change the way that light's bent. And it's going to work similarly uh, over here. 
Uh, but we've got that kind of two-sided thing to contend with a little bit more. Uh, if I increase this exponentially, you'll start to see that uh, we've got a little bit closer to uh, something similar here as well. Uh, three, whoops, three point oh, right? We, we tend to get a little bit uh, full-on solid geometry, whereas here we've got that uh, template to start us out with some some thinner-looking uh, glass walls in here. Not exactly the same, but close. Uh, same ideas, right? I know that at 1.5, our glass is going to look similar. Uh, for our mental ray textures, it kind of adds that back to it. Uh, for our standard textures, we don't have that uh, kind of interior wall to it. So we would have to do that, let's say, like by making a sphere uh, and applying our texture to it. Uh, and then maybe giving that sphere something along the lines of a shell, like our shell modifier here would do for us. Uh, say we'll go 5 uh, and 0 a little thicker, right? We get that inside wall looking thing uh, happening there. And that'll give us, you know, close to the same uh, final result that our mental ray arc and design does for our standard. We just don't have those display options with our, with our older standard textures. Not to diminish their usefulness because I still almost always go straight for the standard textures uh, before my arc and design textures. Now be that because I started with standard textures first maybe or because I just find them a little simpler without all the, the bells and whistles sometimes when I just need a good old simple uh, glass texture or something like that. Hopefully this, uh, this kind of gives you a little bit of an idea though on how uh, both shaders Albeit how they work a little bit differently, a little bit different software involved, uh, still kind of come up with similar results in very similar fashions. Uh, diffuse is still diffuse. Color is also diffuse, but color is color. Uh, reflection versus specular, although they're the same idea behind how shiny uh, your object or your substance is. Uh, glossiness, how close or how tight that specular highlight gets or that reflective highlight gets, uh, depending on what words you're using. Transparency or opacity, both part of the same idea. They're just using the word from the opposite ends of the spectrum. Uh, index of refraction appearing in both uh, standard and arc and design, etc. Uh, what's really nice about these arc and design materials, however, is that if you really do want to get quickly a brushed metal uh, texture, you can use that, uh, that template there and then just modify things like uh, the color, uh, if you wanted to darken up or do a copper or a gold or a brass tint to it and just kind of adjust to your heart's content uh, there. Whereas here, right, we've got our reflectivity and there's a map in here uh, which is just our noise. Over here we may have to uh, add things like to our specular color uh, and we can do uh, noise uh, and the like such as there or even utilize something along the lines of, let's say, this noise here, uh, like this one, I'll just copy it, uh, to put into something like our bump rather than, than piece by piece uh, something else. And we can get kind of that similar broken up brushed metal uh, feel and look to it. All right?